Hey there, everyone. It's me, Michael, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. Sorry, been absent for a while. Everything's okay, other than the COVIDs. No, I don't have COVIDs. No, I've not had the COVIDs. Nobody I know has the COVIDs. So, um, three days ago would be my 23rd month, right, since my stroke. Almost two years. Uh, so I just thought I'd take some time, because we made some new friends off the Facebooks, uh, where they're just about one year out, um, and they're still kind of struggling through. So, first off, let me just recognize we've gotten to 220 some subscribers. Thank you. That's amazing. I like to thank everyone that's taken the time to watch one of my episodes uh, or uh, videos, uh, taking the time to sh uh, share the content, subscribe, uh, taking the time to uh, just share part of my day with you and your day with me. So, um, and if you know someone that is going through post-stroke recovery, uh, brain injury recovery, or someone supporting someone going through the recovery of a brain injury or a stroke, please point the channel out to them. They'll definitely get some advantage out of the content I do generate. If there's something specifically you'd like to see me cover, definitely hit me up in the links down below. Uh, in the comments, or you can reach me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. And that's Crash the Wonderbird flying through for no apparent reason. It has the zoomies. And third time's a charm. Maybe, maybe not. We'll find out. So, where were we before we were interrupted by the bird? Um, oh, I can be reached at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I also have Instagram, which looks strokeassaulter, and then my Twitter handle is in the description down below. So, 23 months ago in three days. I had the most devastating event ever that'll ever occur. Uh, my stroke was a left brain, uh, parietal lobe, ischemic stroke. My stroke was in the moderate range, uh, a time of admittance to the local neurotrauma center. Um, so I started out with some significant deficits uh, that had I not been in, in the nearest neurotrauma center to me uh, within an hour of having my stroke and having been diagnosed um, and having been administered the TPA. Uh, had that not happened in the time it did, um, things would probably be drastically different today. Uh, I'm going to do a, a full sort of at the 24 month mark, second happy birthday. I'm going to cover that more in depth, but let's just cover the last sort of couple of months. So, right about the time the COVIDs became a thing and the world went into lockdown, I was starting to plan to get ready for my summer of uh, being out in the woods in the weekends and playing a, a game or a sport. Um, I don't personally consider it a sport, I consider it a game uh, of airsoft, very similar to paintball. And the guys I shoot with, um, we want to get as a group, a bunch of us want to get more into the military simulation side of it. So I was bound, fit, and determined to get myself into physical condition to do it. So I purchased a small day bag um, from a company called uh, Mill Spick Monkey. Right? I bought the Boss Beaver Pack, and I've I initially had a conversation with my girlfriend where she rolled her eyes at least twice at me. Um, maybe a third time while they were closed. And I, I said, well, I want to try something and just, just see how this works. So I started out with 20 pounds in the backpack and I would do five kilometers and that didn't kill me. Uh, so I did that for two weeks and then I did six kilometers with 30 pounds and I did that for two weeks and then I did seven kilometers with 40 pounds and I've done that for two weeks. And then now I'm up to eight kilometers and 40 pounds. Now the backpack I have just won't support beyond 40 pounds. So, yeah, I'd, although it has a my life time guarantee through the manufacturer, um, I don't ever want to have to exercise that, right? Because I overloaded it. Like, don't stuff your beaver that full, right? Like, just be honest here. So, let's just, let me just step back a bit. So, her and I had a conversation about, well, you haven't done this in a very long time. I'm like, I know. And then you've got the stroke. I'm like, yeah, I know. And... I said, well, let's just look at the advantages. So I'm going to put on the backpack and it's going to throw off my center of gravity. So my center of gravity is now going to be back here somewhere, right? 
So, so that's going to force me to work on my balance. Um, as soon as I start to know my foot is sort of sliding or dragging or I'm not getting effective like down placement, um, I have the foot drop or a bit of the foot dragging, I now have to be more conscious about the picking up and the putting down of my feet. Um, it has improved my physical endurance. It has improved my uh, cardio endurance. Um, I'm on average, uh, I can usually be to the five kilometer mark under an hour, um, 57 minutes, 58 minutes. Uh, and I can generally average under 12 minutes per kilometer, which is actually pretty decent. Uh, this week I kind of plateaued a bit. Uh, so I was always a little bit over the 12 kilometer mark. Now that could be uh, because I haven't been sleeping as well as I would like to be. I'm having some nightmares again um, and uh, sleep disruption. Um, so I'm trying to modify my sleep routine and sleep hygiene. So that can be less of a problem. Uh, I've recently hook, hooked up with, um, had my first appointment um, over the phone with, a occupational therapist that's going to help me uh, get back to work. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to return to the employer that I had. I don't believe so. Right now, my psychiatrist won't recommend that. Um, so right now, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm still technically employed there, but I'm on a long-term uh, leave of absence. I really don't know what's going to happen in the work front. That kind of concerns me, but there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, so I have to unfortunately take my direction from my doctors and my psychiatrist right now will not authorize me, so to re recommend, I don't know the right word to pick, but basically, uh, in conversation with him, he's basically said that, no, you should never go back there. So I'm not. So now I don't know what that means. Um, so 23 months, there's, there's been a lot of hurdles, right? Um, the initial speech language deficits, uh, speech and language therapy, uh, the physiotherapy. Um, I have a mate that I've met via Facebook that him and I tentatively um, have planned to meet in Greenland to do some rucking uh, or tabbing together maybe in 2021 or 2022, right? Uh, that'll flesh itself out as time goes on. And then in March, um, end of March, I had uh, an appointment in Toronto for a two-day neurological neuropsychiatric assessment. That was two days. I'll do a video on that one um, uh, for release sometime next week. Um, and then just to sort of discuss my second neuropsychiatric, neuropsychological appointment and, and some of the things that that was targeting for and sort of the reasoning behind that. Uh, so basically it's 23 months, right? Uh, I realize that there are people that are longer than 23 months past their stroke and they may not have had the same level of functional recovery as I have had, right? And that, that's just gotta be difficult to deal with. Um, I, I, I've seen from my grandmother's stroke, what that can look like. I, so I have some have some insight as to what that may feel like. Uh, I have some comprehension of what that might feel like. I don't understand it because it's not me. Um, I, I have I have an understanding, yes, because I saw what happened to my grandma after her stroke. Um, so I, I can appreciate and, and what some of the frustration would be like when you uh, have language difficulties or massive mobility difficulties or you have difficulty feeding yourself, you have, you know, difficulty dressing yourself, um, things like that. So I, 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 can, I can totally understand um, in a third party experiential way what you could be going through. Um, but, but every stroke, every brain injury is unique to the individual. Um, you can't apply a standard sort of benchmark of activities, right? Um, if your stroke is left brain versus right brain, that automatically impacts two different sets of um, mental and neurological abilities, right? So your left brain controls one part of your body and one part of your sort of 
your uh, motor functions, your right brain does the other. A brainstem stroke is completely another um, situation unto itself. So every, and then what hemisphere is or was it in? Was it in multiple hemispheres? Was it um, a hemorrhagic stroke? Was it an ischemic stroke? So every, every event is so unique to the individual. So please, when I say I have the ability to do something, um, and doesn't necessarily mean that it's come easy to me, because in some cases it hasn't, um, that I do it perfectly every time, because no, that's not the case. Um, that I don't, I take some serious consideration before I just decide to venture off and stumbling madly off in all directions to try something new. Um, you know, I, I, I will sort of weigh out the pros and cons and then decide if this is a reasonable thing to attempt. Um, so I've learned a lot over 23 months. Um, I've had experiences, good, bad, indifferent, horrible over 23 months. Uh, I've learned a lot about myself, about other people. And the biggest thing I can say after 23 months is perseverance. It's it's because a lot of the stroke outcome, and I'm going to speak in generalities, not in specifics. A lot of the stroke outcome is just frustration, right? You're frustrated because you can't feed yourself. You're frustrated because you know your brain and your body are fighting like a divorcing couple, and someone's trying to get custody of one kid versus I want that chair, you need that couch, and nobody wants that painting your aunt gave us. Um, you know, so some of that is, you know. Just the frustration of your brain and body not getting along. Some of the frustration of, like, I could do this thing. This thing used to be so easy to do, and now just even attempt it takes three hours of just getting ready that I'm exhausted. The neur neurological fatigue and exhaustion in and of itself is frustrating. Uh, you know, then you get how the stroke is impaired uh, and in some cases damaged relationships with people around you. Uh, then you get um, your ability to kind of relate with the world. And then we're not even going to talk about the mental health side of it because that's it, its own ball of wax. Like because of the stroke, I've got PTSD because of the stroke. Because of the stroke, I've been diagnosed with um, major depressive disorder. Um, and then they think, but I don't think I've been officially diagnosed with because uh, I haven't seen the documents yet. Um, right now, I might be leaning towards adjustment disorder. It just means I'm having difficulty regulating old normal to new normal, right? So there's a whole host of, you know, new considerations. Uh, the word new normal. People right now with the COVIDs are talking about the new normal. Well, for fuck's sakes, I've been dealing with new normal for 23 months. Um, then you get, you know, just for a period of time after your stroke, your time isn't your own. You're kind of highly scheduled and you're going to this appointment and that appointment. And, you know, you're going this test and that test and that assessment and waiting for this. So it's just in and of itself, just some of the, the grind after the stroke is frustrating. All I can say is persevere, right? Set manageable goals. Set goals that are realistic and relevant. And just persevere to get to that goal. Don't worry about how much time it takes. Don't worry about how many times you stumble. Don't worry about, you know, um, if you can't do it perfectly. Right? That, that's it, that's not a thing. Right? Perfect only exists in the dictionary. Right? Perfection doesn't exist anywhere in the world except in a dictionary. Um, you know, so don't worry about if you can do it perfectly. Don't worry about if you can do it exactly the same way you could even two days before your stroke. The fact that you continue to make progress, the fact that you continue to persevere, the fact that you continue to just struggle through the things, that's what's important. At least that's my takeaway. So anyways, on that note, if you've liked what you've been watching for 23 months now, please like, share, subscribe. If you want to see me cover a specific piece of content, I have some questions. You can reach me down in the comments down below. You can get me on Twitter. You can get me on the Instagrams. Uh, you can email me at strokeassault or at gmail.com. Uh, and if you know someone, again, that's going through the throes of recovery from a brain injury or stroke, please point the channel out to them. 
If you happen to know someone that's supporting a loved one going through stroke recovery or brain injury recovery, again, please point the channel out to them. And if you happen to see someone, either yourself or someone around you, appear to be suffering, uh, or not suffering, but he appears to be a uh, going through a stroke, such as someone appears to be immediately befuddled or confused, uh, someone has balance problems, someone has eye problems, they can't see to one eye, they only see in grayscale, they can't move their eyes in a certain direction, they only see a little dot in the world. Uh, someone who has facial droop, there's a noticeable visual slackening of the facial muscles. Someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all. Someone, um, uh, someone has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate language for situation or context, or you cannot understand speech. Someone who has uh, difficulty standing unaided or general body weakness or weakness on one side, Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.